In our day-to-day -day lives, when we want to evaluate categorical syllogisms, we run into a problem that categorical propositions are not put in their standard form. So we have to be able to recognize that it is in fact a categorical proposition that somebody is giving us, and we need to be able to figure out how it is that we can transform it into or recast it into its standard form so that we can think about the categorical syllogism in complete clarity. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at some rules for translating the categorical propositions into standard form. So first let's look at some general rules. The first rule and perhaps the biggest rule is to figure out the meaning of the ordinary language statement that you're given. So somebody says a statement to you and what you have to think about is what information is being conveyed by that statement given the context in which it's being stated. And then while holding that meaning in your mind, that probable meaning in your mind, then you want to ask yourself, would it have the same meaning as an A statement, E statement, I statement, or O statement? And sometimes one statement will actually have to rely on a combination of them to capture the meaning. And you determine which. Then you just restate the ordinary language statement using the quantifier subject term copula and predicate term as determined by rule two. So if we're talking about an A statement, if it has the same meaning as an A statement, then we want to use the quantifier all. Um, if it's the O statement, if it has the same meaning as an O statement, then we want to use the quantifier sum, and then we want to use the copula R naught. So as an example that I have here, you can imagine somebody saying that a whale is a fish. And some reflection on the statement a whale is a fish, somebody does not mean to be saying that, oh, some whales are fish. They mean anything that you bring up to me that's a whale, it's going to be a fish. Because you're saying that just whales are a kind of fish in some regards. So that's going to have the same meaning as all whales are fish. That's what that person is trying to convey. Now let's look at some specific rules. The point of this next rule is to ensure that what we're talking about is absolutely clear. So for our subject term, it wants to make sure that it in fact in includes a noun or a pronoun. And the same with our predicate term. We want to make sure that it includes a noun or a pronoun. Furthermore, we need this noun or pronoun to be plural because of what our copula, our two options for our copula. So for instance, if somebody tells us a fire truck is red, we know that they mean to be saying all of all fire trucks that they are red. The subject term already is a noun. So we can leave that the same. We do need to make sure to change our quantifier to all. But red is not itself a noun. It's supposed to be modifying the kind of trucks. So we want to say all fire trucks are red trucks. And by including trucks, now we've included a noun. And we satisfy rule one. We could have also said red things or red objects instead of red trucks. Now going to rule two, our standard form just stipulated that the copula we will use include R or R not, R and R not. So it's gotta be one of those options. So if we say a fire truck is red, we have to replace the is with R. And this explains why fire truck 
has to be changed to fire trucks. We need the verb agreement. Or in our next example, if we say that some birds don't fly, then we need to say that some birds, and we need to make sure that we include a noun as per rule one, some birds are animals that don't fly, but we also notice we included are when that was absence, absent in the statement in an ordinary language that's not in um, standard form. The next rule is about singular propositions. So let's ask ourselves what a singular proposition is. A singular proposition is a proposition that makes an assertion about a specific person, place, thing, or time. So the important notion here with the singular proposition is by picking out or just being talking about a specific thing, it's talking about only one thing. The difficulty then in taking a statement that talks about a specific person and translating that into one of our A, E, I, or O statements in its standard form is that in its standard form, we always have to use plural nouns because in our standard form, our copula are always are and are not. So if we don't do that, then we end up with a statement that's not grammatically correct. The workaround to this is to use the plural noun, but then use as a parameter the phrase identical to. And what we mean is numerically identical. So if we talk about plural things, if we use the plural noun, but talk about it being identical to something, it's only going to pick out one entity. So that'll get us the, the desired result. So let's look at that um, being used in this case down here. So our statement says, Benjamin Franklin invented the bifocals. So what we do is we say that all people, and our plural noun here is people, all people identical to Benjamin Franklin are people who invented the bifocals. Well, of course, all people identical to Benjamin Franklin is just one person, namely, Benjamin Franklin. But this takes the form of all A, R, B, which is what we need in order to, conform, to get, have it conform to the standard form of the A proposition. Rule four has to do with what we might call W words. For instance, when, whenever, where, wherever, whoever, whatever. But specifically, we have in mind temporal adverbs, spatial adverbs, and then certain pronouns. If we're talking about temporal adverbs, then we can translate the, the statement when we put it into the standard form. We can translate it in terms of times. And when we talk about spatial adverbs, we can translate it in terms of places. So if I say, whenever I go out to eat, I get Chinese food, then we can translate that to all the times I go out to eat, I eat Chinese food. Or spatial adverbs, wherever I walk, it rains, we can translate as into all places that I walk, are places that it rains. And we have a similar phenomenon with pronouns such as whoever, whatever. So I can say whoever is my brother is my sibling. And that can be translated as all people who are my brothers are people who are my siblings. Now, another rule that's important to keep in mind when translating these propositions with W words into categorical propositions in the standard form is that in the standard form, the noun 
And what modifies the noun that follows the W word gets into the subject term placement in the categorical syllogism in its standard form. So what do I mean? Notice in this sentence that we have down here, it says she goes where she chooses. The where occurs in the middle of this sentence. The she chooses is what follows. And to get, to get the correct meaning when translating it into standard form is to say that all places she chooses to go are places she goes. Notice then that the chooses, all the places she chooses to goes, goes into the subject term placement even though in the original sentence it occurs at the end. The next rule addresses propositions that leave it implicit whether it's a universal statement or whether it's a particular statement. That is, it, it doesn't include a quantifier that makes it obvious which one it's supposed to be. So, of course, given those cases, we need to think about the meaning and then decide whether we need to be using a universal quantifier of some sort, like all or no, or whether we need to be using some because it's a particular statement. So if we look at this first example, the proposition in the ordinary language is children are human beings. Well, someone who says that means to be saying of all children that they are human beings. So the best translation is all children are human beings. But there seems to be a close resemblance to the above ordinary proposition and the ordinary the proposition in ordinary language below it which says that children live next door but it's very unlikely that the person who says that children live next door means to be conveying that all children live next door that person probably means to be conveying that some children live next door that there exists some children that live um, in the house next to us We also uh, will come across quantifiers that are not in standard form. They don't conform to all or some. So an example that we have here is the quantifier many. And we need to think then about which quantifier it will be best to use when translating many spider, in this example, many spider bites are not lethal into a standard form categorical proposition. Well, many does not get us all the way to a universal proposition because it falls short of talking about all of the things in question. So the best that we can do is to use the word some since that means at least one. And many, of course, is going to mean at minimally at, at least one as well. And in fact, it's true that it probably includes more than that. To say that many is going to not just, like one isn't going to satisfy that, two probably isn't going to satisfy that either, right? It's going to be some larger quantity of things. But given our quantifiers, some is going to be the best one that we do, or that we have available to us. So that's the one that we're going to use. So many spider bites are not lethal gets changed into some spider bites are not lethal bites. Our next rule lets us know that some conditional statements can readily be, readily be translated into universals. So if I say, if an animal has four legs, then it is not a bird, then it's going to be true of any animal that you bring up that you put up in front of me, that it won't be a bird. Now, of course, it's not standard form to say all a are not b.
And that's because a propositions do not have the coppola R not. And it turns out that this statement is in fact ambiguous between two different meanings. So in this particular case, if we say if an animal has four legs, then it is not a bird. We're saying of all of our animals that none of them, all of our four-legged animals, that none of them are birds, which is the same as to say that no four-legged animals are birds. So it gets translated into an E proposition. The next rule focuses on phrases such as only, none but, none except, and no except, where there's a bunch of other words between no and except. And what we want to know is that the immediate language after these phrases, and up to the point where it gets to the noun and what's not modifying the noun, that bit of language needs to go into the predicate term of the sentence that we're using to translate it and keep it in the standard form of the categorical propositions. So if we look at the example that we have down here, we have none but starting out at the beginning of the sentence. And it's the brave or brave people that follows immediately after the none but. Even though none but the brave starts at the beginning of this sentence, it needs to make we need to make sure to have it in the predicate placement of the standard form categorical proposition that we translated it into. So, and we can notice, thinking about what we mean, if I say, none but the brave deserve the fair, I haven't said that every person who is brave deserves the fair. Instead, I'm saying that if someone deserves the fair, that, that person's going to have to be brave. Or another way to put that is, all who deserve the fair are brave people. In contrast, instead of only none but non except or no except, if the language follows the only, here the word the changes the meaning significantly, then that language needs to go into the subject term of the sentence that we, or the translation of the original sentence into the standard form. So if I say the only shows worth watching are cable shows, then what I'm saying is that all the shows that are worth watching are cable shows. That is, if a show is worth watching, then it's going to be a cable show, or all shows worth watching are cable shows. Sometimes we're confronted by propositions that require a combination of our categorical propositions in standard form. So examples of this would include all except S or P or all but S or P. So for example, if we say all except faculty are made to take tests, since we're accepting faculty, we're committed to no faculty members being people who have to take the test, are made to take the test. But we're also then committed to the non-faculty members, those who didn't get accepted, accepted. All non-faculty members then are people made to take the test. And we need both of those together to capture the meaning of all except faculty are made to take tests. So let's practice translating some propositions in ordinary language into standard categorical propositions that are in standard form. 
So take a look at this first sentence here that says a dog is not a reptile. Try to think about what that means in terms of our A, E, I, or O statements, and then give a translation. Go ahead and write down a translation of that, and we'll match that, we'll compare that to the translation that I give. So you might want to pause the video while doing this, think about it for a little bit, and then I'll provide you a translation. Since we're saying a dog is not a reptile, we, do, we don't mean to pick out just one dog by saying a dog. Instead, we mean to be talking about anything that you bring up here that is a dog. That thing is not going to end up being a reptile. Well, that says the same thing as no dogs. Are reptiles or no dogs are animals that are reptiles. I would accept either. So one, we need to realize that we're conveying the very same information as an E statement. It was also important that you go from the singular dog to the plural dogs, and that you go from the copula is, well, is, not is not, but is, to the copula are and that whatever your noun is for the predicate is plural. As opposed to the singular reptile, we get the plural reptiles, or you would need the plural animals that are reptiles. So now I'll take a look at the next statement and think about how you ought to translate that. If you'll recall, many does not get us to the universal statements because it doesn't talk about every single asteroid, so it won't be an A or an E proposition. Instead, it's, we're going to be limited to one of our particular propositions. So some asteroids are and undiscovered is not itself a noun so we need to say something of the sort as such as things are things that are undiscovered now take a look at the next proposition it says not every person is a decent person. You may have been tempted to translate this into an E proposition since it has not in front of every person is a decent person. But to say that not every person, not every single person is a decent person is to commit yourself to there at least being one person who is not a decent person. So the best translation of this sentence is some people are not decent people. All right, and this next statement says few people are up to the challenge. So think about that for a moment, and then I'll provide a translation. Of course, if we say few people are up to the challenge, we're at least committing ourselves to some people are people who are up to the challenge.
but by asserting few instead of a few people, we also mean to suggest that some people are not up to the challenge. So we have to include the I proposition, but also the O proposition version. So some people are not people. Who are up to the challenge. Now let's look at the next sentence. It says an animal is a feline only if it is a cat. So go ahead and pause your video. Try translating this sentence into categorical proposition that's in standard form and then I'll give you my translation to say that an animal is a feline only if it is a cat is to say that being a cat is a necessary condition or a requirement for an animal to be a feline so remember that conditional statements can express necessary conditions, namely the consequent expresses the necessary condition of what's in question. So we could recast this as if an animal is a feline, then it is a cat. And then we can translate that into all felines are cats. You could have also said that all animals that are felines are cats, but it would do just to say all felines are cats. Now let's look at the last statement. It says, no shellfish except oysters make pearls. Well, if no shellfish except the oysters make pearls, then all of the shellfish that make pearls must be oysters. So all shellfish that make pearls are oysters. <laughs> 